first time since lockdown, we are in ordinary time. That great long stretch of summer green in the church's calendar, in which the weeks are ordered one by one. But of course this is not ordinary time, any more than Lent or Easter were. For some of our family, this lockdown has led us to look up at the stars. This was all prompted by my daughters showing me a satellite arcing through the heavens, the first time I'd ever noticed one. I now have on my phone a satellite spotter, a stargazing app, which will even show you the stars in the southern hemisphere if you point it at the floor, and my most recent acquisition, the International Space Station Tracker. I'm completely hooked. So, for a few recent evenings in the last week or so, the two of us have been perched on chairs so that we can see over the hedge for about 10.15pm, looking out for that telltale bright light in the night sky. Now, of course, with two extra astronauts on board, the whole thing is mind-boggling. Eliza and I are both acutely aware that we don't understand the science the astrophysics or the mechanics or anything else. We feel the poorer for it because in this science is wonder and awe and amazement. But as we were discussing the other night while we were craning our necks, even if we did understand it, it wouldn't stop space being fundamentally a beautiful mystery. And perhaps the strangest and most mysterious thing of all, whether you're a scientist or just a mother and daughter standing in the garden, is that we are stardust. That the same stuff which sparkles in the velvet blackness above us is also imprinted in our DNA. That we are made of the mystery. This first week of ordinary time culminates in a day honouring another mind-boggling thing, Trinity Sunday. On Sunday, we will reflect on the shimmering, impossible truth that God is both a unity and a multiple, a series of relationships, an invitation to us to participate in his own bonds of love. This is a truth which taxes the mind. It is a vast pool of understanding whose depths none of us will ever fully plumb about a God who cannot be contained. And yet, Though we might feel the poorer for not understanding, we should perhaps instead revel in the beautiful mystery of the Trinity, which sparkles all around us. The mystery which makes our ordinary extraordinary. The mystery which is as vast as the heavens and is imprinted on our DNA as surely as the stardust. In the words of that wonderful hymn, of the Father's heart begotten. By his word was all created, he commanded and was done, earth and sky and boundless ocean, universe of three in one. All that sees the moon's soft radiance, all that breathes beneath the sun, evermore and evermore.